Hi, Serena here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. For Christmas, I got a Paul Rubens watercolor set. Now, this is the pearlescent one, which was on special for Black Friday at $39 from $49, so I'm glad it wasn't too much. Um, let's take a look. Now, I like the boxing that they do on this. It really protects it, and everybody's always seen these in other videos. Of course, they wrap it. Um, this one looks rather purple, but that's okay. I don't quite know about the pink color of the palette. Certainly, it's a great marketing thing uh, for the company to have pink palettes because nobody else has pink palettes, and they would be very visible. However, um, I don't know. I kind of wish they were black. It, if I was a guy, I'd really have to double think it myself or maybe want to even transfer the, the pans to a darker palette, to a different palette. Um, they've, it's a three-fold palette and they've got a uh, nice color swatching chart here uh, with a lot of curious information I wish I could read but I can't read Chinese so I don't know what that means unfortunately. Um, they've got QR codes here but I don't have access to something that can read a QR code right now uh, so we don't all that's lost. It's got a swatching card which fortunately they do have an English translation so I can use it. Um, not so good for folks that may speak other languages, French, German, anything else. Uh, it looks like they do have Chinese and English. Um, also again everything on the front Chinese can't read it don't know what it says on the back too. Uh, some of, looks like some of the prints from this pamphlet wound up on here. I don't know if that's going to come out. Now the pan colors themselves look like they're hard to read. I don't know if you can see that. You know, it's like very pearlescent. I mean, I get the pearlescent wrapping with the pearlescent paint, but it, it really makes it hard to read. Um, I can barely make out that this is flash yellow pearlescent watercolor paint. So they do write it in English on the side um, and then they have a little Chinese writing with a barcode. Doesn't look like they have a number on it. They might have a number on the sides, side of it there but we'll have to see. So I do like that they are organized. The colors are organized in some kind of logical pattern. It's kind of a logical pattern I might use going from kind of light to dark. Uh, so I like that, but I'll unwrap them, swatch them out, and we'll see how they perform. Okay, so I've unwrapped the pans, and I have a few notes of, or comments I'd like to make. First of all, the um, papers that come with the wrapping, or that wrap the pans, it's very hard to see the labels and the wording on I don't know if you can even make that out. Um, it's easier to make it out while it's still on the pan while it's because it keeps the label flat so if you can do that definitely do that. Uh, I'm glad they put the colors or wrote the colors on the swatch card here because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to make some of them out. Now numbers are international they probably could have gone with a numbered system, at least put numbers on them, but they do have, although they don't have numbers or anything on the pans themselves, they do have, I don't know if you can see it there, the um, Chinese writing, probably have it upside down, the Chinese writing that gives you the color name of the pan. Not going to do me any good, uh, so if you if you're, don't speak Chinese, uh, make sure that you have your numbers or, or rather colors written down as you have them, as you take them out of the pans uh, so you don't mix them up. But um, the pan is mostly in color order as I would use it anyway. Um, they have a funny little thing here, a flash purple at the end of the palette, which is a little weird. You've got your brown and, and black and then it goes to purple. I probably would have maybe moved it over here somewhere, maybe uh, switched these two blues around so the darker one was there and the lighter one was there, then push them over and then put that one right there so the purples would follow and then the darker blue and the lighter blue. Uh, also, you've got this yellow here, which is kind of like the funny man out. It 
probably doesn't really flow gold, yellow, and then coppers. I would probably move those two coppers over and move the orange there. But that's really personal choice as far as that. Uh, one thing I did notice, they have between the fruit green and the dark green a color in between here which they call golden maroon. Now, I'm going to have to look that up, but I thought maroon was more of a reddish brown. So that's kind of a little odd, as at least with the naming. The filling, um, their quality control might be a little bit off, especially on this gold here. I don't know if you can see that that's not really filled very much or it kind of sunk down. There's a couple other colors that have a little bit of a sink down to them so they're not quite filled to the top. Now I have a, a Kuretake gold set uh, that can replace that or that can supplement this so it's not that big a deal for me but you know if, if this is your only pearlescent or iridescent set that might be a big factor because you usually use a lot of gold. It might be one of those colors that you use a lot of. So that's one thing that maybe they can work on. Now it's not an inexpensive set so I would expect certain quality but also you know to give them the benefit of the doubt it might be a, an issue of the formula. Maybe that particular color sinks or shrinks more than the other colors so it could be an issue of that. Um, one other thing I, I did notice is that I had that funny little mark on there from the pamphlet that they put in with this. And it was a blue pamphlet, it's just ink. I don't know if they put this in like right after they printed it or it was in the heat or what, but the ink got on the palette itself. I can't get it out. I tried soap and water and I tried baking soda and water to try to rub it out a little bit. I don't want to use it too much because it's going to make the palette, uh, the enamel on the palette, uh, damaged. But I couldn't get it out. So maybe not a big deal for most people. I don't really use these, um, that part of the palette. I will use the wells to mix in along with my other palettes, but it, it kind of it's disappointing that it does that. And the other thing I did notice as I lifted this out, I did notice some scratches in here. I don't know if you can see those. I'll hold them up a little bit more. There's a scratch right there. A really tiny one, if you can see, right here. It's kind of silver right there. It's kind of hard to see with the glare, I know. Uh, and then there's another really noticeable one right here. So um, that is going to affect the palette just if I leave it as is, if I don't use it for mixing colors because the moisture in the air will get right in there and start rusting it out. So I'll have to put a little touch up paint there, uh, a little enamel rust-oleum or something, and then I'm not going to use that as a palette itself. I rarely pull these out. I will use these two parts of the palette. But just to let you know, uh, those were some issues. I know some other people had issues of the palette coming rusted in the mail. I, I didn't have that issue at all. This looks fine. It's, you know, of good quality and no other issues with that. So now let's see how they actually swatch out. So I did move some of the colors in the palette, but they still may need some refining. I might move a few more around. For this uh, test I did use my Etcher Cold Press Watercolor Journal and I found that some of the colors more, were more shiny than others and I really had to pre-wet the paints. Even then some needed almost scrubbing to get the paint out. Um, it, in other words, it didn't really readily release the paint uh, or, the, or the shininess. I don't know if you can see, I'll tip it a little bit. I don't know if I, the lighting isn't so great today, it's a little cloudy day, but you can see how some are more shiny than others. Now I'll just go over them so you can uh, get an idea of the colors themselves. I have the notes here. So this is pearl silver white pearlescent. 
This one's pearl platinum pearlescent. I've got flash yellow pearlescent. This one is listed as deep interference yellow. Now the difference being the pearlescents are reflective. So in other words the mica particles inside reflect the light back to your eye. It's just a pure reflection like a mirror. The interference colors are uh, refractive which means that they almost absorb the light into the paint and then bounce it around. Uh, so I don't know if that makes it more intense or less intense, but they do have the two different types in here. So we have the deep interference yellow here. Then I've got royal gold, bronze satin, deep interference orange, flash red, deep interference red, wine red, pink, rose red, Cape Myrtle, Symphony Purple, Flash Purple, Symphony Blue, Deep Interference Blue, Shiny Blue, Deep Interference Green, Fruit Green, Golden Maroon, that was the one I had the question about, maroon. Maroon is listed as more of a reddish brown color if you look it up uh, and I thought that's what it was but this is how they list it. Uh, so that's the golden maroon. Then they have dark green, brown, and silver black. Okay, so uh, of course they're not going to show up perfectly on white paper. It's not something that I would normally use on white paper, but wait till you see how it looks on black. Now for the black, I used my uh, Legion's Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Black. And this is a, a 300 GSM, 140 pounds, and uh, just like a black watercolor paper. But look at that. It's of course more vivid on black. and You can see how those colors, oops, I've got it upside down. You can see how those colors are really shining on there. Let me make sure I'm getting that on the video. Again, the light is not so great. I'm hoping this is in focus. And you're seeing that shine on there. What I'll do is take the tape off so you can see what it's like here. And this one really gave me some nice textures. Oh, see, this paper is not really liking the tape very well. Pulling up quite a bit of tape, quite a bit of paper with it. But that's okay. It's in between the uh, in between the swatches, so it doesn't matter that much. But let's see if we can get this off. Pretty, sometimes it's hard to get these things off when you when you've got them down there. And I've had them down for a little bit of time, so I should have taken them off right away. But I wanted to take it off on camera, just so you could see how much nicer it looks underneath. You know, you've got those blotches running over the tape there that make it look sloppy, but this will make it look much neater. Now, I did like the uh, texture that some of these paints gave me on the black. It was almost like... It was almost like the mica was suspended, the, the reflective uh, particles were suspended on the top of the paint. And if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that if I move it closer. Look at those nice textures there. See those? Really beautiful textures. Really kind of nice there. So I want to play with that a little bit. And um, overall, I think it was okay. Now. I did have to do a lot of work to saturate the brush, so there may be better sets out there that give you better saturation um, of the color as well as the shine. I definitely do want to experiment more with the textures on the black paper. Let's take a look and see on an actual subject how these some of these paints perform. I have one that set aside that I want to do on my white paper and I want to see how it looks at, when you actually use it on the white. Now I want to take a look and see how it's going to 
uh, provide a little accent for this painting that I did already in kind of um, kind of tie-dye colors. It's not true to nature at all, of course. And I'm going to use the uh, this is the fourth one in. This is going to be the Deep Interference Yellow. So I'm just going to kind of... Now this one actually readily um, released from the... Ooh, maybe I want to use a little less of that. Or what I should probably do either blend it out like that, which is kind of nice, or I could wet the whole leaf and drop it in. Let's try that. Let's try wetting the whole leaf and dropping it in. Got to do it on this one here. Well, it's kind of picking up some of the paint along with it. Didn't want to do that, but let's try this and just drop it in there and see if it spreads like other... No, it doesn't. You really have to you really have to spread it yourself. Okay. So it's just as well if I do it, although that does let a little bit of the color underneath come through. I like that a little better. Maybe if I'm not as... Maybe if I'm not as aggressive with this, I won't pull up so much paint, but let's drop it in and spread it a little bit. That, I like that better because you don't really lose, uh, it doesn't really cover it over like it did here. That covered it over, although of course I'm sacrificing some of the shininess of the, you know, the mica particles. I'm not really putting it in in a very saturated manner, but still, we'll get a nice effect out of it, I'm sure. See how it comes out when we finish. I just want to get this one last one here, put that in, spread it out a little, and I'll do the same with these. I'll just do those all at once. I've got some there, got some here. On all the leaves that I see, I'm just going to wet the entire leaf just so that I don't get that funny cauliflower look when they dry. You know, if you wet one part of your painting and not the entire thing, you'll get a funny cauliflower look when it dries if you're working in watercolor. Now I'm not you can see I'm still pulling some back there, but that one there. And then these. Let's see how this looks when we're done. That one there, I don't want to forget. There we go. Okay. Already it kind of looks a little richer. Now I do want to use a little bit of the green as a highlight as well. This one is the, the Deep Interference Green. Again, I'm using an interference color here don't want it to be too intense, too very watery, but that's a little watery. Okay, let's see. This is kind of the greenish blue. That's a little bit strong. So you've got to experiment with these things and see how they're going to react. I'm kind of covering over the, the light there that I don't really want to cover. I think I might want to leave it as is. I like that beautiful... Um, maybe I'll put these on the tips. I like that beautiful color there where it's it's fading into the white. See, that's a little bit too dark here. Let's see if I can kind of blend it a little. There we go. That looks a little better where it's not just so... So, just so harsh. You don't want a harsh look. And really when you're using things like this, like a, a mica based color, you they're for highlights. You don't want to really color the whole thing or it'll look ridiculous. I mean I want it to look beautiful not ridiculous. So I've got some of that in there and it's given it a little bit of a deeper tone. 
So let's take a look and see if you can see that tipped over a little bit. It's given it a little bit of a sheen, but I'm sure if I did this on a black paper it would look a lot better. I just wanted to try it on white and see what the possibilities are. I like that yellow in the middle. It does give it a nice look, but I want to leave it at that and uh, I just wanted to try it there. Now I hope this video gives you an idea of how some of these paints perform. Leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Remember to hit that like icon and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.